Here's what one looks like after it's finished. Hey, what are we doing? They are making some Kiss Stormtrooper coasters. So, what happened with these? What do we do? We printed it out, and now we cut it. It's on super, not super thick, mid-range thickness paper. It's premium matte paper. Premium matte paper. And then we cut it out with an X-Acto blade. Looks like that, but except for with a handle. Then we use spray adhesive. This particular one's by Krylon. You should wear any kind of mask or respirator when you're using aerosols and be in a ventilated room. We have all the fans and vents on. Air dry it for just a second. These, we only prep them by spray painting them. They're just white. Hexagonal? Pentagon? No, pen is fine. Hex is six, right? I'm pretty sure. We're gonna go with that. Shape coasters. Well, they're tiles, so we're gonna use them for coasters. This is a super easy-ish DIY if you need something for Christmas or a birthday or an anniversary and you just want to make something instead of spend money. Coat on them. You don't want to dampen them. You don't want them to like bubble up and stuff, but you need to definitely give enough to where they're not gonna move once you apply the resin to the tops of them. We also like to do these on these lifted situation home rigs. It's just a painting stick and spray paint cap. We'll check for our um, levelness. before we pour the resin. Yeah. Because we're going to be able to level these. Yeah, we are. Give me that. Shh. Oh. Purple guy is my favorite. For these we are using Envirotex Light. We use this for almost all of our resin projects. However, we did just get some of this and a lot of people that like casts or do pendants use this, but it also says that it's FDA compliant, which I'm pretty fairly for sure that means um, it's safer for anything that's gonna be around edibles. Yep being used as a cheese board. So when we go to Baltimore next month to do those countertops, we'll probably end up using that depending on the stress test that we have to do.
Bruce putting a little dollop in the middle that we're going to spread to the outside edges. Starting out with this much fur coaster. Probably want to mess with it as little as possible. So as soon as you can, don't touch where the the decal. I guess you can call it a decal. Print. Print. Because you don't want to risk the ink moving or the edges coming up and floating to the top of your resin, even if it's not that. Much. come white but we used a standard spray paint in matte black to change the color. You can obviously use any color. Matte probably will work the best. We used almost a whole one of those ounce cups. Yeah. Half. Um, for each, we got up to this flower. So that's about two thirds of a one ounce cup. So you can also, when the bubbles are bigger, like this one, this bubble right here, you can blow it to get it to pop. It's not always best to use heat to pop the big bubbles, especially when you have like a decal or a print under it. You want to keep the resin as thick as possible so that it doesn't overflow and leave you with weird ridges around where your print is. So we're just going to let these set for a minute and revisit probably every 20 minutes to make sure these aren't here and pop them. So here are the final, final sets. Super smooth, no lines, all the bubbles popped. The only thing that we're gonna have to do with these guys is sand the back on a couple of them because when we added extra layers of resin to make sure there wasn't an edge, um, we did not remember to scrape the bottom, so we're going to have to sand that off. And some of them took some wood from our, oh, what you call it, so we're going to have to sand that off. Not all of them had sketchy bottoms. Some of them came off relatively clean, but happy with them. They are going in a show tonight.